Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 10. I just started, took the 10th injection today. All one is expected. I don't know if side effects will ever happen. Do they come over time or is it really dose level? But things going well. I kind of feel weird for the first two hours and then it passes and then I'm fine. This week I lost 1.4 pounds. I went to a wedding this week and got a cold. It's just people are really germy. But that's okay. People are important and getting out there and being with people is important. Lost a few more inches everywhere. Primarily it's coming off my neck, mostly off my waist, a little bit now off my hip. So we're starting to see some movement in some other places. I had to uh, do something kind of interesting this week. I used to work in an office and now I work remotely for a uh, company in another state. And so I used to go to the office. I used to see people every day and now I just don't, or at least they see this much of me every day. And I have a lot of clothes. But here's the thing is they have gone everywhere from like 3X to when I lost weight, I was starting to just get into the larges. Um, and so I have clothes at every size. And too many clothes for a person who works remotely that you only ever see this much of. So I decided to do a funny thing and start going through all my clothes and just looking at everything. And I told my friend it looks like L.L. Bean got in a war with Coles and started throwing shoes at each other. It's just a disaster around here. But what I started doing was I got rid of my largest clothes. So right now I'm somewhere around 1X. And so I took everything that was 2X bigger. It's in a pile. It's waiting to go to a donation center. It was kind of fun that way. I, at first, I was thinking, no, it's too soon. You only really lost 15.8 pounds. Too soon, right? But then I thought, this is kind of going so quickly that if I don't stage the next sizes of clothes, I could blow through an entire level of clothes having never worn them. So approximately, oh, I don't know. I think it was 10 years ago. I worked out with a trainer. And she helped me lose a lot of weight. And I got down to a pretty reasonable size. That's when I got into XL and was just about to size large. It was exciting times. And it's so funny because how long have I been overweight and I have these clothes? I was only smaller for this amount of time. I have a ton of clothes. I have almost more clothes in the smaller size, either large or XL, than I have in the clothes that I typically have worn since high school. Oh, well, what are you going to do, right? So I started going through all my clothes, trying things on, seeing what was too big, what was too small, and just getting rid of stuff. I mean, that is my strategy. I'm going to do kind of a, a scorched earth strategy with clothes. As soon as something is too big, out it goes. I'm going to have no place to go if I gain weight. So that's kind of my strategy to try to encourage me not to. As things, if I get down to my goal weight, start to feel a little too tight. I'm going to be in trouble. I have to go buy new clothes. But it's exciting because I have a lot of clothes and it would be nice to start wearing these clothes sort of in order. Some of them I wore for a short time when I lost weight the first time. So the question is, is how did I lose weight the first time? It was a ton of cardio. I, I mentioned last time that I did a ton of biking and I did. And I have this hill that's probably 500 feet climb, almost straight up. And when I used to do it every year, sort of as a test to see how good my cardio is, how, how healthy am I, it would take me 45 minutes, 60 minutes to go up this hill. I was breathing and wheezing. I have asthma. I was just struggling to go up that hill. And when I got down to the lowest weight I got with her, it was 19 minutes. 19 minutes. Something that took me an hour. And I didn't wheeze. I just marched right up that 500-foot climb straight climb up. Little wheezy at the top, but I, I, I just brooded it out. I mean, I really not just lost weight, but I accumulated a lot of cardio health, a lot of strength health. So that's the goal. According to Happy Scale, I will be at that position again by next birding season, next March, if I keep doing what I'm doing. And that's the goal. I felt pretty good at that weight. I, I mean, it's still probably, I don't know, like 60 pounds beyond what I should be at. But I felt great. And that was something I was looking forward to getting back to. What I did is I went through all my clothes. I 
put in a goodwill bag everything that was too big, got rid of some things that were just too ratty, and I kind of staged the next sizes of clothes. In fact, I staged the next clothes after that. So as soon as the XL shirts go, then, well, I don't really have any large shirts. I didn't, I didn't stay at that level for very long, but I have a ton of XL shirts, T-shirts, everything like that. I'm kind of a T-shirt gal myself or kind of the softer side of Kohl's. I usually like to wear work shirts that look like I attacked a couch in one. So that's fine. So that's kind of the strategy. And that was kind of the fun thing I did this week was to really go through these clothes. And some of them were my favorite shirts. I, I have a pineapple shirt. I love that shirt, but it's too big and there's really no point in wearing it anymore. So we're going to see a new set of shirts coming soon. 1.4 pounds and a lot of inches lost. That was a pretty good week. Some things that I'm just noticing in general is that, first of all, I am someone who rarely ever gets sick. And now I've had COVID and now I have a cold. Is it because I'm not eating as much as I used to? Does that mean I'm more susceptible or it's just bad luck? I don't know. I'm not going to curse it or I don't think you curse things, but you know what I mean? Like make it a mental thing. And the other thing that I struck me is that part of in my small steps podcast I did a thing about you you basically never want to do something bad twice that's usually the goal so if you skip exercise don't skip it twice because what happens is twice becomes a week and then becomes a weekend and then becomes a month and a month becomes a year you can't let bad habits uh, start to increase go down that path you you really need to fight that if you miss a day, you know, I'm not talking about being sick because I was pretty sick, so I did skip some days there. But, you know, if, if something was like, eh, I just don't feel like it or got busy that day, don't let it happen twice. Just always make sure that if you skip something or you ate something, you ate something you shouldn't eat, just don't do it again the next day. Stuff happens. So when I was at this wedding, what makes me primarily nervous about all of eating is I'm pretty confident in my house that I can control my food, that I know what I'm going to eat and I know what I'm not going to eat and I can keep those things in the house. Going out still makes me a little bit nervous. So in one case, I went to that conference and I did pretty well. But then that conference at lunch was feeding everyone turkey sandwiches. And so I could cut that turkey sandwich down and eat part of it. And that was fine. I went to a pub and I ate kebabs, very simple food. That was fine. My friend and I went out to a restaurant that sells uh, macaroni and cheese dishes. And it's one of our favorites, particularly when it gets to winter and you feel like being all cozy. And I got the normal size. It is not very big. I mean, it's very rich, you can tell. But the, it's this big, right? I ate like a quarter of it, and then I played around with the rest of the dish. I couldn't even eat anymore. It was good. I enjoyed the part I ate and had fun with my friend. But I have to keep in mind, I need to order the kids' menu. Uh, so. But then at this wedding, I was also, again, a little worried. What's going to be there that I can eat? But usually most things have a chicken dish or a fish dish. You'll, you'll find something. And I stuck to a very simple chicken piece. I had a little plop of mashed potatoes, which I haven't had, like a, a, a carb dish in a really long time. It was good. But... And I'm um, really stuck with that. And I didn't eat dessert. And I didn't drink any pop or any alcohol, which you're not supposed to drink alcohol on this. And it went okay. I didn't feel sick. And I kept, like I said, had a pretty good week of weight loss. It gets really easy that when you lose a pound and a half. I was talking to the people at work about this. And when I told them my weight goals or how, many, how much weight I've lost, they said, well, it's good that you're going slowly. And it's funny because they're right. I am going slowly. I am mentally going slowly with this diet because I don't want to lose bone mass. I don't want to lose muscle. I'm not really at that age where you want to lose things that are going right for you. I feel pretty muscular. I feel like I have a good bone mass. I don't break bones or anything like that. Let's just keep the good things and not just take over the bad things. But I do have a pretty low calorie diet. And I have noticed some changes. My hair is weird. Usually it's big and poofy and kind of soft. Got kind of, I don't know. Like I said, it's getting weird colics in places. It's not behaving at all. I think that is, um, 
I think that is the diet for sure. Now I'm catching colds. Is that the diet or not the diet? I do notice things just because when you're on a low calorie diet. So I've been using two apps. One of them is called My Net Diary, and I'm going to put a link in my show notes. I'm doing a podcast this Sunday for a friend at podfeed.com, and you can go to her blog and read it. But basically, she's on vacation this week, so I'm doing her whole podcast this week. And I talked about My Net Diary and how it was there for me when I lost weight the first time. It was there for me when I found out I had high blood sugar and I wanted to work on it myself. And now it's here for me again, where I'm tracking my blood sugar, but now I'm trying to make sure I eat enough, that I'm getting the right nutrients in. And so that's my net diary. Like I said, in the uh, notes on this video, I will put a link to that blog article. And if you go to the Nocilla cast, that is going to be Allison, spelled backwards. That's N-O-S-I-L-L-A cast podcast. This Sunday, it'll be released, and I'm talking about my net diary and what it did for me, all these different stages. I'm also going to talk about how I use a, an app called Happy Scale. My net diary, 1.6 million entries when it comes to food. Nobody loves food tracking. But if you have something that has a huge database, then you're just quickly going, I had kebabs, I had macaroni and cheese, I had cottage cheese, and it enters and you're taking less time. It is a huge database. I have been using this app for a long time. I think they were like independent and they were kind of old-fashioned app where it didn't have a lot of great code to it. They have improved over the years now. It's just top-notch. Also has glucose tracking. So you can tag your glucose to say this was fasting, this was before exercise or after exercise or right before bed. So then you can run reports and compare apples to apples. So when I went to my doctor, I showed up with a bunch of reports. This is my nutrition. This is what I'm eating. Here's my glucose. See, it's coming down because the glucose test I don't take again for another, I don't know, a couple months. You know, he wants it to give it some time. So this way I can track my own blood sugar. I can show him charts. He smiled. I smiled. It was a good situation. So that's nice. But the happy scale does something kind of interesting. It will allow you to smooth out your scale experience. I've mentioned in the past few weeks, You lose two pounds, you go up 0.6. You lose 0.6 pounds, you go up 0.2. I mean, you would love a very directional slope. But very often when you're trying to lose weight on this drug or not with this drug, it is a bumpy slide. And sometimes people get rather, I don't know, terrified about the scale. It, It depresses them. And this app, this Happy Scale app does a couple of things for you. First of all, it makes you a nice smooth chart. So you can just sort of see, oh, I'm sloping downwards. Yeah, there's some ups and downs, but look at that nice slope. So that you can see your progress without seeing the ups and downs. And if you have the premium, I believe, which is fairly cheap, I think it comes out to about $12 a year, it will break your goals into 10 sub-goals. So I mentioned in the past that if you can't bring yourself to lose 100 pounds, can you lose 5 pounds and then just keep doing that over and over again? Happy Scale will break it up for you in that way. The other nice thing that it does is it sort of projects out to the future, which is a little dangerous because you can't count on weight loss like a math formula. I wish we would. I wish we could say 3,500 calories, that's a pound, it's math. And it is math, but it's math-ish. According to Happy Scale, I will be back at that weight I loved being at next March. I felt great at that weight. I was walking fast. I was starting to get into running. I was I, I ran in New Orleans in the levee. I, I went running all sorts of places when I traveled for work. I even the one of the days they were having the practice run in Central Park for the marathon and I was running and I didn't notice or I didn't know that the Central Park trial, I don't know what it was, but people basically running it without actually running it. And so I just got on the path and I I, I didn't do the whole thing, but I mean, I was running part of it. I was in Central Park and I went running and it was great. That was the weight I felt awesome at. So I'm looking forward till next March. So that way, the Happy Scale app smooths out your chart. It gives you little tiny goals, but then it shows you that big picture. Keep going, Jill. If you keep going next March, you're going to get at that weight you're really happy with. So I I think the whole thing is very encouraging. 
I saw a couple interesting posts on Reddit. And one of them was one person was talking about how she can't smoke anymore while she's on COVID. She just has no desire. Just like me and Diet Coke. I tried to Diet Coke when I went out to that macaroni and cheese restaurant. Couldn't drink it. In fact, it kind of made me sick to my stomach. Can't drink Diet Coke anymore. And that was something I drank five cans a day. And someone else mentioned, too, that they can't drink, obviously, because you're not supposed to drink while you're on this drug. And I think they lost the urge to do it, too. But it depressed them because they go out with their friends. They're drinking. Some, it's a social lubricant, right? If you have anxiety or shyness problems, it can kind of ease things up a little bit so you're a little bit more social and outgoing. And with him not being able to drink, I think it was causing him anxiety. It was causing him stress. He feel like he wasn't having fun in his life anymore. It just harkens me back to you really have to figure out what's going on in your mind. I figured out through all this process, I am a boredom eater. I have to find other things to do when I'm feeling bored than go down to the kitchen and look for something to eat. That is easier to solve than when you're eating drinking or smoking for anxiety. You have to tackle that. And if you have to go get counseling, go get counseling. Because I think this weight loss journey is worth it. To get healthy, I'm not even going to talk about all the other side effects studies are finding when it comes to Manjaro. Tons of them. But if you could just lose the weight and even get off of your addictions. For me, I wouldn't pay my bills. I think I mentioned it last week. I barely spent any money. I don't put salt on everything like I used to. Don't drink Diet Coke. Addictive things that nagged at me went away. But now also, again, losing the weight. If I can walk out of here in two years, I don't know if it can take that long, but let's say two years, without my addictions, with a healthy body weight, back into exercise, maybe running, and biking, and doing those big hikes and stuff like that, and I'm healthy, nothing nothing else is, is worth missing that. And so for people who felt like they were missing their comfort blankets of smoking and drinking and whatever else they do, it's worth sticking to this so that you can get to a healthy place. Like I said, find counseling. Find something. For me, like I said, I understand my thing is easier. I didn't have much food noise. It was really eating the wrong things. It was boredom. It was, boy, wouldn't that taste good right now? Kind of thing. If I can walk out of there without those types of things haunting me, and that's worth everything. And so I was telling some people at the wedding about this drug and what it's doing for me. And someone said, a friend of mine said, wow, this really is a miracle drug. That's It is. It is absolutely a miracle drug. Not in the sense that you're going to blink your eyes and you're going to suddenly be thin. Not in the sense that you're not a participant in this whole weight loss thing. But in the sense that this is just the help you needed to be a normal person. I, I was telling her that I think this put food back to where it belongs. It puts food back to the proper position. I, it was funny. I... I had some extra calories yesterday, and I got some pumpkin seeds. I put them in a cup. I was, you know, I was supposed to get X many more calories. I completely forgot about eating them. They're still sitting on my desk from last night. But when I was at the buffet for the wedding, and there's cake, and there's all these foods that are there, I went, no, you know, I'm, I'm okay. And I know it's the drug talking. I know it is. But it kind of put food back where it should be. This is something I need to do to eat to stay healthy, have a fun thing here and there, but this isn't supposed to be the center of our lives. The center of our lives is supposed to be living our lives, you know? And so I think that's the miracle of this drug. By putting food in its proper space, we can go out there and start living our lives again. Anyway, good week. Um, I don't know. I'm one of these people that I read anything and I read what people are saying and I'm like, Oh, you know that. And I think about things all the time. So I look forward to, like I said, going through more clothes, getting rid of more clothes, wearing different clothes, looking like somebody else's couch for a while. I hope this is helpful for you. 
please remember that you can always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I have a podcast, Start With Small Steps, and some other ones. Buzz, Blossom, and Squeak, it's all about nature and going outside and learning about anything, stars, planets, plants, animals. I talk about anything, and it's not such a deep dive in science, you know, to try to tell you science facts as much as it how you can go find that thing. How can you go find a frog? What is a frog? When do they come out? Why do they do what they do? That kind of thing. This week, strangely enough, I talked about ragweed, but that's also because it is ragweed season and it is completely stuffing me up. So I thought, why not do a fun thing on ragweed? We don't know a thing about it. Anyway, thanks again for listening and watching the videos. I hope you have a great week. Tell me your experiences. I'd love to hear what's going on with you and your great Monjero experiment. Have a good week.